Hello, it's Camille. Welcome back. I am wearing the same shirt as yesterday, but in blue. I got it in the Philippines uh, years ago. I went there for a month and a half. So wonderful. If you can go to another country uh, and share the gospel, it is so awesome. I stayed in the missionary family. Totally made me realize uh, why people need to be missionaries living in other countries because you develop relationships with the people. They've started three churches, a uh, bridge to the islands and nations is the ministry name, bgti.org. So good. I'll have to put a link below uh, to their ministry. So here we go. Chapter 26. If you'd like this video, subscribe, comment, uh, anything else. I have a blog, Camille's Journal, if you'd like to know more about how I believe and the different resources I like to use in life or mentors and all that, I gotta start blogging more. I really appreciate you guys being here and let's get into chapter 26. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the backs of fools. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest you also be like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. He that sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off the feet and drinks damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that binds a stone in a sling, so is he that gives honor to a fool. As a thorn goes up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewards the fool and rewards transgressors. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. See you a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man says, there is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turns upon its hinges, so does the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hides his hand in his bosom. It grieves him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. He that passes by and meddles with strife not belonging to him is like one that takes a dog by the ears, as a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and death. So is the man that deceives his neighbor and says, Am I not in sport, or am I not joking? Where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where there is no tale-bearer or gossip, the strife ceases. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tale-bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd or earthen vessel covered with silver dross. He that hates dissembles or disguises it with his lips and lays up deceit within him. When he speaks fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations or detestable things in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be showed before the whole congregation. Whoso digs a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolls a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hates those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Another great chapter, I like this, it says, The great God that formed all things... Let's just stop right there. That's amazing. The God who formed all things. I was going through the book of Genesis the other day, through the account of creation, because I am I was in my devotional time, and all of a sudden, I got this idea to just start writing about what salvation is. From creation to salvation to eternal destination. And so I was writing about, because I've read the Bible many times now, and I've been to church my whole life. And so I kind of get the picture of, you know, heaven uh, the devil when he fell and then, you know, a choice and how God did it and how, why we need a redeemer with Christ, uh, animal sacrifice in the old Testament, what that did with covering the sins and then how Christ was like the last sacrifice gave his own blood. The, the penalty for sin is death. And so like, and that's why we all die. We're all made to live forever, but we ended up dying and like going either to heaven or hell because of sin in the first place. And then how we need redemption and how it's based on faith, not through works. And so I have to finish it, but basically where was I going with that? Uh, the great God that formed all things. I just was like, he's our creator. It's absolutely amazing. Formed us out of the dust. We literally turned back into dust. So amazing. And uh, just the amazingness of God and just radio waves and text messages, how they even work. And even televisions, how those work, sound. 
The God is so amazing. Anyway, so right here it says, The great God that formed all things both rewards the fool and rewards transgressor. The word reward doesn't necessarily mean a good thing or a bad thing. It's just evil is rewarded by God and righteousness is rewarded by God. You're going to get the results of whatever you have uh, sown in your life. So that's really cool. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. So much in life do we see people returning right back to the same thing that didn't bring good results in their life in the first place. And so like people, they get so empty uh, with the world, they, but they keep going back to parties. They keep going back to bars. They keep going to bad movies. They keep going back to uh, friends that actually get them into trouble. They keep going back to things that actually aren't filling their heart but they have this imagination that this time it's going to do the trick. You don't want to be returning to a folly. We want to be going to wisdom and building a life instead of just wasting our life, wasting our time. The Bible talks about how the foolish man builds his life on the sand. The wise man builds his life on the rock. And when the floods come up, the house on the rock, the firm foundation of Christ will stand. The house on the sand, like we see this, it's just falling. And even in society right now, we're seeing that people that used to seem so important to everybody, nobody cares about them anymore. And so many even celebrities you see now, like people aren't watching a lot of the shows anymore. They're not caring about these awards that are being given because people are like, they're not standing for anything that's good. They weren't, most of them weren't standing for anything good before, but society wasn't caring about as many important things as they are now. Now we're seeing socialism and, and communism attacking our country. It's like communism keeps trying to rise its ugly head throughout history over and over again and we have to fight it and fight it back and then but it's like a spirit it's like literally evil and anyone that gives into the deception of that you know that they're not a christ-led person because they wouldn't be thinking this is going to actually bring utopia on earth so build your life on the rock not in the sand build your life on this firm foundation of the word and you will not be shaken like the people around you the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason so interesting we have to be humble you know because sometimes we can be that conceited person and we have to like know that even if we're smart in some ways uh we're not smart and wise in every way and we always need to be open to learn. My biggest uh, thing in life that I want to be is teachable. I don't want to ever be so sure of myself that I think that I've come to all the answers or whatever. I want to continually be learning from wise people that, first of all, honor God. And then there's also business principles in life that you can learn from other people. But like the older I get, the more that I want to find Christian authors, Christian influencers, because if you don't put God first in your life, you're gonna have some things off in your life and I don't wanna become like some of these people that they're, like I, I watched this guy named Clay Clark and he said, he's a Christian and he said, a lot of those influencers that he used to follow, they had divorces, you know, people ahead of these huge companies in America, uh, billion dollar companies are not having wives <laughs> because they've left them. And he's like, I don't wanna do that. So he changed his ways. He started following, you know, Christian ministers and things uh, instead and or as well and it's just it's it's so good to follow people that honor god first and have that firm foundation that we're talking about it also talks about strife in here it's so important i'm so anti-strife and i'm so thankful that my dad made an anti-strife uh life for me in my household growing up and it says that basically don't get involved in other people's gossip it says he that passes by and meddles with strife belonging not to him is like one that takes a dog by the ears it goes on to say where no wood is there the fire goes out so where there is no tale bearer or gossip the strife ceases i've learned so much as i've gotten older to keep a tighter lip and to be more confidential i come from a big family and a lot of times in big families everything gets talked about but as I've gotten older, someone told me I was confidential and I was like, thank you so much because that's really what I'm working on being. I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to betray a confidence and many things, uh, they don't belong to everybody. And I got reprimanded a few times and I learned, you know what, like just because like I think it's safe information doesn't mean someone else feels comfortable with you sharing it with other people. And so uh, really don't gossip and don't uh, be the person that people can't trust. Don't be sharing people's secrets. Don't be sharing people's weaknesses. Um, because I mean, there's sometimes when you have to, but most of the time you don't. And so become that person that people can trust and you'll have more people that will be closer friends to you and they will know that they can trust you and they'll keep trusting you with, with more. So, well, that's all for today. This one is just so full. I really encourage you guys to just go through these yourself as well, because you're going to get things from the word of God, uh, in your own study, even more than you're going to get from me or anybody else. A lot of times when you go into the Lord for yourself and you get that personal revelation from God and he just like 
lights up the scripture for you. And it's just like, whoa, like that's amazing. And it's just like when it gets in you from him, it's like it stays. Whenever you get that revelation, it stays with you and you literally live your life different uh, from what he shows you. And so get into your word, read the New Testament, read the Psalms and Proverbs, read Genesis and Exodus in the beginning of the Bible, start there. And it's just, you're going to have a changed life the more that you just digest this stuff. And one day you'll be a teacher to other people. Thank you guys for coming back. I love you guys so much. I will see you very shortly and God bless you. I can't believe it's almost done. Okay, but I will be making more videos. Don't you worry. Now that I've started, I don't know if I can stop. I don't know. Have a great afternoon. Huh.